What's up, everybody? Axe Wizard here. Um, I got a lot done since last devlog, working on my game some more, Neurality 3092. And uh, I've done a few changes. Let me just get in and show you what I've done, and then we'll get into the actual code review. So, first things first, um, I implemented a new background. You probably can't tell, but I implemented a background system so that I, I set backgrounds are determined by what star system you're at. I also implemented a spawning system, which looks just like I did before, except now it's spawning based off of what we set in the star system mapper tool in the last uh, devlog. So now that I've got that information set, I'm now using that. So you can see we have a really high spawn rate. We're spawning lots of ships. We're spawning lots of uh, ships that, that belong to the harmonious synthocracy. Um, if you were paying attention last devlog, like I wasn't, I had a big typo. So synthocracy, I had the Y and the N transposed and, uh, took me, took me an hour to find that bug and took me a few minutes to fix it. But, uh, yeah. So anyway, let's go ahead and boost on out of here and let's go and jump to another faction or uh, another system here so there we go we're slowing down and then we should boost in a second here there we go so now you can see we boost here at a uh, a new system and I have you see how the background changed as well now the background I had to make a slight change to it because I couldn't I couldn't get the the dual layer to work how I wanted it to so I just scrapped it so right now my parallax my, my parallax background only has one layer uh, I'm gonna revisit that again but just for testing this I wanted to to at least get something working so now Backgrounds are determined by what we have in our star in our star system data, and I think that works pretty darn well. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and jump back over to Genesis. Uh, we are still got to implement some sort of indicator. There we go. So now we're slowing down. We'll jump in a second. I'm also thinking about tweaking the uh, the the slowdown speed for when you hit warp. I kind of wanted to like bring you to like a much slower. Uh, or I want you to come to a stop much faster than you currently do. So, yeah. But everything else is still working, so I could still, like, buy things and, you know. Boom, look at that. Whee! And, uh, yeah. So now that I've got this in place, uh, what I can do is I can start... Uh, I can start just adding a few more systems just to test... I can start polishing out the uh, map so it doesn't look so this <laughs> and uh, and then I can also uh, uh, start making a lot more ships and stuff so I've got like the harmonious synthocracy faction off to a good start I need to start making some ships for other factions so maybe I might make one for um, like the coalition of free worlds next and I think uh, then I can start playing with those uh, spawning stuff and uh yeah so that was it for the game let me show you the the star system mapper tool because i did do a slight tweak since we last ran that so if you look at the star system mapper tool and say for example we go and i'm just going to add a a new system probably like over here so you'll see that i changed the background i, I didn't change I, I added this background image field which is a drop down that has a list of all the backgrounds that we currently that I currently have. I found uh, this nice like 32 pack of backgrounds off of Open Game Art that's licensed CC0, and uh, I picked the ones I liked, and yeah, they all they, they all look pretty good. So this we we get to pick like what what background we, we want to use for it, and I also corrected the uh, typo in the faction names, uh, so that shouldn't happen anymore. Uh, that was awkward. Let's jump into our code review portion. So I had to, let's start with our star system mapper tool. So I had to do some migrations first of all. So let's go down to my migrations, uh, thing here. I'll show you what I did. So first things first, 
I had to fix some data because I made a freaking typo. I hate my life. <laughs> so if you look here, I have my find string. This is this is the, the string that, that's incorrect that I want to find. If you look right here, it says harmonious snithocracy, which is not what it needs to say. It needs to say synthocracy. So S-Y-N, not S-N-Y. So what I had to do for that is I had to iterate through every key in star system map. I had to uh, compare if the faction that it was set to is the same as the fine string. If it was, we're setting it to equal the, the fixed string, the correct one. And then I also had to uh, go through every one of the ship probabilities for that and make sure that every faction in that uh, was also updated as well. So that's what this messy block of code does. And then the other migration or data change I had to make to this, this data structure was I had to, I added a new, uh, a new field called background image. So any star systems that did not have the background image already, I'm just initializing that to be star field one. And so that's all, all I had to do. So that was what I did for, for the migration there. And then if we go to new system, you can see I added the background image here. So it just defaults to, uh, to blank, um, which it should probably default to something sane, but whatever. And then, uh, so yeah, so I added that field and I, I'm tracking that here. And then I just hooked up that signal and inside of our process function, because I think later versions of, of Godot allow you to add items uh, from the node or from, from the inspector over here. But so if I go to background select here, um, I don't have a way to add items to this option button. The only option button thing it gives me is selected. I, I can't add any items to it, at least the, that I know of. So the only way I, I know how to do that in, in Godot 3.4, which is the version that I'm on, is uh, with code. So inside the code here, what I'm doing is, uh, let's see, so ready. Here we go. So I'm just populating uh, all the options. So for every one of these background paths that, that I have here, I just made this uh, array that has all the file names. And uh, for every one of those, I'm just adding that item uh, to my dropdown. And that allows me to select it. That way I don't have to worry about typing it in and, and getting it in wrong. I can just select the one I wanna use. Later on down the road, I think it would be cool to add some sort of preview, but I would have to make sure that I copy those files over to this project as well. And then the, the, then I could render them if I mouse over them maybe, but I don't feel like doing that. So I'll just work with it and change it as needed. And I'm pretty happy with that. So that was the big change I did to the star system mapper tool. So once I had my data worked out how I wanted to, I just copied and pasted the file over to uh, uh, Neurality 3092. So I'm going to close this down. And let's see. So let's go over what I did in Neurality 3092. So I found some more backgrounds off of uh, Open Game Art. I already mentioned that. I added those in, and uh, you can see them down here at the bottom left. I got a few good ones. Uh, really cool. They all tile. So I'm pretty happy with, with those. Uh, Star System Mapper Tool Expanded. I already went over that. I did some miscellaneous bug fixes too. So I fixed a bug to where clear scene did not get all the projectiles and any selected indicators. So you might have saw in previous episodes where I would land at a location and then there'd be like missiles and like lasers and stuff still flying by. That's now fixed. Uh, I got that figured out. I also, uh, and I also fixed that with uh, the selected indicator because there was a bug where if I clicked on a ship and it had a little uh, selected indicator on it and I landed that was still there <laughs> and it wouldn't go away so I, f I fixed that too so fix those bugs 
Also fixed a, a small bug where the the little side thrusters on, on my ship, they weren't triggering when you were steering with the mouse. So if we just run the, the, the game really quick, you can see as I'm steering, you can see like my little side thrusters, you can see them kick in. Uh, now it doesn't do it if you're only turning slightly, but if you're turning a lot, uh, the, they weren't kicking in before at all. So I fixed those. So bam, another little tiny bug fix off the list. I also tweaked uh, ship scenes. So this was a pretty big change. What I did here is if you look down here at my ships at the bottom left here, I used to have ship one, ship two, ship three, blah, 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 all the way to like ship 12. And that's not very, no, oh, I need to fix this. I got another typo here. Synthocract. Okay, rename. Synthocracy, heavy fighter, copy path. So now I'll go to my ships list here. And if I go to heavy fighter, I can update this path. There we go. So I made this uh, another auto load, which is probably a bad habit to get into, but I like it because this is going to be an, another thing that I'm going to need to access from multiple places. Uh, later on once I get more features added. So I added a list of all the uh, ships. So it's just a dictionary. The name, uh, the, the key coincides with whatever I named it. And then from there, we're just storing all the ship data that we need. So again, the uh, name, the same thing I was doing with the other, uh, the other dictionaries where I'm I have that redundant name field there because we may not always have access to the key depending on how I pass this data in. Um, so I'm just adding it there. I have the description that gives a, a description of what this ship is. So I can use that for maybe my shipyard screen. When I start working on that, you'll be able to see a, a description of the uh, ship. The scene path. This is the path to the actual scene here. So I'm still going to have scenes for every ship just because there's no way that i can really make like one ship uh scene and then just do that because every ship is so different they have thrusters in different spots they have you know different sprites different sizes different number of weapons weapon slots all that that different stuff that's best determined on a scene basis per per ship so i don't feel bad about having like you know potentially hundreds of scenes for all the different ships that i can have in my game because that's a necessary thing that I have to do. So I, I treat those more as like prefabs for my ships. And then I also have a, this uh, field here called factions. And the, these are the, these are the, uh, when, when, when my spawn system goes to spawn a ship, uh, I want to make it so only certain ships uh, can be spawned to a certain faction. So, for example, the Synthocracy frigate is like a warship, and it should belong to the Synthocracy faction. You shouldn't be able to spawn independent frigates because those are like military-grade uh, ships. And I don't think the Synthocracy would allow randos to have that stuff. So, yeah. So I've got this factions uh, array that, uh, that specifies the allowed factions. So for example, like Synthocracy Transport, this is like private sector stuff, like uh, merchants and stuff like that. So you can have an independent merchant or, or something uh, have this. So you can not belong to a faction and still purchase and pilot this uh, ship without getting blown up. So... Uh, th I added that, and then I also added ship class here, so that just determines, like, currently I only have four ship classes. I have freighter, fighter, uh, carrier, and cruiser, and uh, I might add some more, but those are the four I've got right now. So I'm just, I'm just specifying what type of ship class it is, because uh, what we do here is uh, later on down here, I have a function that says get random ship, and what this allows me to do is that... I can pass in a, sh a, a desired ship class or just leave it blank to, to any, and I can pass in a desired ship faction. So the reason why this is important is because in my system mapper tool, I was specifying my ship uh, probabilities. So 
you know, determining the, the percentage breakdown between what uh, class of ship can spawn. So, for example, fighters, cruisers, carriers, whatever. So, like, a fighters might have a, 40, uh, a 45% chance to spawn in a certain system. So, I need to be able to... So, I, I ship class is, is technically being determined by star by the star system data. And then I also have the uh, faction breakdown. So, if that... Uh, that type of ship is picked for for that star system. What's what's the uh, faction split for that? Like, does it does it have a percent chance to be independent? Is it always going to be something? Uh, so, for example, on the 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 very main system here. So, if I run the uh, game on the very main system here, anytime you see a frigate or a heavy cruiser or a, a starship. Uh, or even this heavy fighter, it's always going to belong to the Harmonious Synthocracy faction. So I made that faction break down on uh, Star System there. Like, that's that's always going to be that way. So, for example, like carriers. You're not going to be able to buy a carrier being some nobody, <laughs> right? So the, the, this big carrier here, this uh, this absolute unit is uh, belongs to the Harmonious Synthocracy. So... I made that faction split on the star system mapper tool uh, so I can save that that data but there uh, if if we look down here at our console there's a lot of uh, stuff down here but occasionally you might see something to where it wasn't able to find a ship by that uh, by the, it wasn't able to find a ship by the desired criteria. So let's just look down here. So I have this thing, this print, no, no eligible ships found. Um, there's a, there's a case where that happens. So if my ship class is cruiser and my ship faction is independent, uh, it will throw that right now because I don't have any independent cruisers right now I, I need to add more and more ships but let's go over what this uh, function does so first things first we are initializing an array so I can store the eligible ships and then we're gonna go through and we're gonna track down our entire ship list here so we're gonna iterate through every ship and we're gonna say hey does this ship meet our ship class criteria and if that ship does not equal our uh, ship class that we passed in, then I'm doing another an, another little check. I'm saying you no, know, but is this ship class set to any? If the ship class is set to any, it's just going to... Um, or if the ship class it does not equal any, that means that we have not found it. We're going to skip this ship, and we're going to continue our, our loop to the next iteration. So we have th this continue here. Next check we're doing is does the ship meet our ship faction criteria? So this I'm just uh, going through and finding the faction. So I'm saying, hey, does my factions array, I'm using the, the has method, does it have ship faction as a value within that, that array? If it does not, skip this ship and then continue to the next loop iteration. If we've, uh, by now, if we haven't already skipped this, uh, this code means that it is a valid ship. So we are appending that to our eligible ships. And then what we're doing here is I have a check here that says, hey, do we find any eligible ships? And I have a nasty to do here. So as this, this should go away when I get more ships, but for now, just pick a random one from the list and then output it to the uh, console. So I'm just picking a, a random ship from the list. And then if I do have eligible ships, which I should have multiple once I get like more and more ships added for like every case, you should have multiple options. Um, it's gonna pick it, it, it's gonna pick one of the uh, eligible ships and just uh, return it. So let's let's look at where I'm using that. So in main, um, I have a spawn ship function now. This used to be called test ships, and I just renamed it, and I just redid it entirely because test ships was some of my earlier code in this uh, game when 
I was first porting it to Godot and I was still learning the engine a lot. So there was a lot of nasty code within test ships that existed there before. So I basically re rewrote the whole thing. So first thing I'm doing is I'm randomizing just to make sure that we always have a, a random seed. And then what I'm doing here is I'm picking a ship class and a faction for the ship based on star systems, uh, current system. So remember I'm picking it based on what our current system specified, um, ha uh, what, what our current system has specified so that, uh, all that stuff I'm doing in the uh, system mapper tool carries over into the, uh, uh, game. So here I'm just getting the ship probabilities, uh, dictionary from the, uh, uh, star systems map on the, the current system. So I'm just getting the uh, ship probabilities. I'm picking a randomized number between one and 10. So I'm using the, this rand I function, which just gives you a random integer. And then this, uh, this percent sign followed by the, the number you want, uh, will get, will give you like the, the total uh, amount. So this rand I, uh, percent 100 will give you 0 to 99. It will give you like a randomized in in integer from 0 to a total of 100. So 0 to 99, that is a, a, a 100 possible values. So I have to add 1 here to make sure that that gives us 1 to 100, which is what we want. So then how I'm determining the probabilities is I'm basically like stacking them on top of each other and then running through them to see where we landed. So for example, if, so for my ship probabilities, um, you know, fighter might have a 40% chance, freighter might have a 40% chance, and then maybe cruiser has a 20% chance, and then carrier has a 0% chance, right? If that's our, our case, then say for example, we, we randomize something like 57. So what this is going to do is that this is going to take the current chance. So it's going to start with, uh, at the top, it's going to start with fighter. So fighter has a 40% chance. So it's going, it's going to, to subtract 40 from 57 or whatever I said the uh, number was. So that's going to leave us with like 17. It, if we're not at below zero, we're going to keep going. Um, so the next thing is, it's going to say, you know, freighter. I said, I think I said freighter was a 40% chance. Well, uh, 17 minus 40 is going to dip us below zero. So bingo, we've got one. So then I'm setting that ship class to be the, the key that we had. And, and that's how I'm, I'm determining that. I don't know if there's a better way off the top of my head. That's just what I was able to figure out. So it seemed like a solution that would work. So that's how I did that. Cause remember I have four different ship classes and the sum, uh, of all of their chance to spawn for all of them needs to equal 100. So uh, that's how I'm able to make that work. So by now we should have a, a ship class. I'm just adding a check here that says if we didn't have one, you know, something went wrong, unable to get random ship, no ship class found. So yeah. So now we know what class of ship to use. Let's also determine which faction. So again, here I'm randomizing our number again, and I'm initializing ship, uh, ship faction to be blank. And then what I'm uh, currently in the uh, system mapper tool, once we, uh, let, me, let me just pull that up again so I, I can give you guys a, a visualization. So you can see here that, you know, a fighter, this is the uh, percent chance for fighter. And then this is the percent chance for the independent faction, which is faction one uh, or faction zero, technically. And then faction one is technically faction two. So we can determine that there. And then faction two is technically faction three. So there's three different possible factions for every ship class. So that's what we're doing here in uh, our main scene here is that uh, this just gives us zero, one, two, and three. So faction zero is always going to be the independent faction. I just have that hard coded. And then factions one or two, we can specify like a, a ship breakdown. So for example, like on uh, the Genesis system, the one that contains earth, 
you know, th most of the fighters are probably gonna gonna belong to the harmonious synthocracy, but there's probably a few independent fighters there. So if we did uh, pick a fighter, then we have like maybe a 40% chance for it to be independent and like a 60% chance for it to belong to the actual faction that the system belongs to or whatever I have set in the uh, star system data. So that's what that's doing there. And again, we're just doing the, the, the same thing where we're subtracting from our random number until we get at or below zero. And then from there, we're setting that as our, our faction. So we should have a faction by now. I'm doing another check here just to, just to be thorough. And then from here, uh, now that w now we should be able to get some ship data based on these uh, these these criteria. So my ships get random ship function that we just looked at before jumping over here, that that will return that whole dictionary. So that will return like this. So for, say for example, if we end up picking synthocracy heavy frigate, it's going to return this whole value. So this whole dictionary. So we'll have access to the name, description, scene path, factions, and then the uh, ship class. So we're getting that ship data. And then what we're doing is we're load and instantiating that uh, ship. We are instancing it. Uh, I guess I should say instance instantiate instance whatever that works so you can see we have ship of type ship we're loading it based on the scene path that we're able to get we're also instancing it and then we're adding it to our scene and then once it's added to to the scene we're also setting the uh, ship faction which i think by now is probably a pretty irrelevant field that i added to that ship because we primarily get factions by what's in the in in the group but I still have it there. Then we're randomizing the rotation. So this rand range zero and TAW or TAU tau or whatever, it's just pi times two because Godot uses radians for rotation. Um, pi times two is basically a full 360 degrees. So it's just a, a easy way of, of doing that. So Next, uh, this is a lot of the same logic that was there before where uh, I'm determining if we are ascending from a planet or just entering the uh, system. This just determines where the ship is going to be positioned. Um, so I'm doing that. Th that's all there. Um, yeah, if we are ascending from a planet, I'm setting the, the scale to be zero and then it will scale back up to one uh, as part of its AI. Yeah. And so, yeah, the rest of that stuff is, is the same as it was handling enemies. Nothing changed there. So that's how I did my spawning system right now. So let's go back up to process event here. So I still have my little uh, flag here that says spawn ships. So, for example, like if I'm on the uh, title screen, I don't want to be spawning ships. <laughs> that wouldn't work out very well. So if we are allowed to spawn ships, uh, then we are going to decrement our timer. And then once the timer reaches uh, zero or goes or, or falls below, then we're going to spawn a ship. So once we spawn a ship, we're going to randomize the uh, timer again. And then we are randomizing that based on the interval and variance that we have uh, specified. So if we go back over here to, to new system, you see down here where we're like determining ship spawn interval in seconds and ship spawn variance. So that, that's what we're doing here. So in this case, the ship spawn every five, every five seconds, the variance is 2.5 seconds. So what we're doing in the uh, game is that we're setting our random range to be interval minus variance to interval plus variance. So this would, if our interval is five and the variance is 2.5, um, so five minus 2.5 is 2.5. So this would be 2.5 to 7.5 uh, seconds between each uh, spawn. And again, that's all just determined by the star systems data. So now that I've got this system in place, I can just keep rocking and just, you know, working in my, in my star system tool and uh, adding a bunch more systems. And then I can determine how many ships are spawning. So for example, if we just, if we just go back and then we just run the uh, game, you know, we saw that there was a lot of ships that were spawning here. So pretty, pretty rapidly. 
So there's there's one ship currently. There's another ship there. Another ship spawned over here. More ships are spawning. So it's a pretty rapid spawn rate uh, for this uh, for this system. But then if we were to go to Harmony's Reach over here, and uh, let's see, we were to go jump over there, it should have a slower spawn rate. I don't think it was slower by much, but it should have a slower spawn rate. There we go. Yeah, so there's not many ships in this system here. So this is a pretty remote system. Like, there, there's a few ships here and there, but there's really not many, right? So I can I can set that in, in my start system mapper tool, you know, make it system by system basis, and just to add a lot more stuff. And once I get going and I add more ships, you know, more systems, uh, more backgrounds, more planets, all that different stuff... Uh, it's really going to open up and the game is going to start coming alive. Like you can go and trade or you might jump into a system and there might be only two pirates there waiting to just kick your ass and you have to get away. Um, yeah, should be really fun. Lots of, lots of stuff to, lots of stuff still to do, but I'm making more progress on it. It It's happening. So that was the system that was, uh... Let's go back up here. So, tweaked ship scenes. We we talked about that. I, I basically renamed them and made uh, the the ship the ships auto load the master list of the uh, ships. I created spawning based off of uh, star system data, and then also the background image is now defined by star system data. So, how I implemented that wasn't really anything too fancy. Um, in my set up space scene where I'm creating my uh, parallax background. I'm loading my scene. I'm instancing it. I'm adding it to the uh, scene. And then what I did is on my parallax background, I actually added a, a script to it and I made a, a method called set sprite. So if we go look at our parallax background here, so all we're doing is on ready, which is when you know the node enters the, the scene for the first time. So we have to make sure that we add uh, add it to the uh, uh, scene before we call this set sprite function. We're just getting the reference to our sprite, which is right here. So you can see I've only got one parallax layer now. I used to have two. I I, I now only have one. I'm going to come back to that later when I have some more time to to fix that up. So. And then I'll probably have to add uh, like a, a secondary layer or something like that into uh, my star system mapper tool. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. So uh, here I am creating a path prefix. So if you remember in the, the star system mapper tool, this background image drop down here, um, this just has the file names. I didn't include the uh, path names because that should be independent of of this uh, of this separate tool. The tool only cares about picking the actual file. So what I can do is that in when I when I set that, I can just add this path prefix and I can put the file name after. So that way the concern about getting the actual file is is the Neurality 3092's responsibility, not the uh, Star System Mapper tool. So I just have to make sure that the, that that the file names are correct. And, and I can make that work. So set sprite, all it's doing is it's just taking in the uh, file name. And uh, I printed that here just for like a, a debug line. I can get rid of that because it's working. So we're loading the asset, which is going to be of type texture. And then we're loading it by adding the path prefix plus the file name. And those uh, strings joined together give you the, the, the full path. And then I'm just setting the, the sprites texture to equal that texture. That's all it is. Nothing too fancy there. But now that opens up a lot because every time I jump to a different system, it's going to have a different background and really feel like a different star system. So super cool. And yeah, that's about all I've done. That's uh, I just wanted to give progress on that because... Uh, 
I think it's working pretty good, and I'm pretty happy with the progress I've made on it, and lots of uh, good stuff to do still. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.